This is the High School Football America podcast for April the 14th, 2020. I'm Jeff Fisher. The High School Football America podcast is brought to you by Gainstrap, America's premier sideline instant replay system with outstanding reliability and customer service. Plus, they have different plans priced right for every coach's budget. To get a demo, go to Gamestrat.com or click on the Gamestrat banner ad located on every page of HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Well, you know me, Mr. Positive, Mr. Manifest, I believe believe that we will have a 2020 high school football season. Now, we all have to do what's right. We have to social distance, shelter in place, all those things to keep healthy. But I do believe there will be a 2020 high school football season. And no better way to talk 2020 high school football than to bring in my good friend from the uh, New York, New Jersey area, Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics, his company for the last three or four years, free of charge, is putting together, has been putting together some of the best high school football matchups in America. And because he, you know, loves football like I do, he took the time to put together a top 10 list, the top 10 best out of state schedules for 2020. Welcome to the show, Joe. Hey, Jeff. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Always great to hang with you and your fans. Yeah, well, it's it's fun to have you on here. And like we said, we're doing more and more of these during this time to take everybody's mind off of things for 20, 25 minutes at a time. And I was excited when you told me that you had had put together a list, uh, you know, but before we get into that list, because we're going to do a top 10 for you here, kind of David Letterman-esque, I guess. It, let's, let's just talk about some things that uh, you may be dealing with as you put these schedules together. I mean, how many teams out there are, are still looking for games and, and is COVID... 19 coming into play on that meaning are people like well let's wait and see what happens with what what what's the deal right now out there well a lot of uh, remember uh, a lot of the teams that we've we've done games for um they're still set etched in stone i mean okay. i'm happy to say that over the last four or five weeks um of all the games we've put together uh you know we're, triple digits worth for 2020 Right. I've not gotten one call yet for, for a cancellation. Um, uh, this time of year, normally it's m- crisis management time when a team drops out for some reason and a team is scrambling for a game, they'll call me. Um, so th- normally th- uh, the first quarter of the year is uh, the games have been already scheduled. And this is the, the uh, crisis time when somebody needs me in a bad way because uh, the whole, the filler, a, a hole that they didn't know was going to be uh, uh, open. So uh, that being said, you know, no news is good news. Uh, I haven't really heard anything negative. Nobody's canceled uh, any of the games we put together as of as of today. Well, that's good news, and you talked about that the last time you were on here. And um, I mean, what's your what's your your thought on everything out there? I mean, I, I know we're all just kind of talking here, but I ask everybody, you know, what what do you think? Are we going to have one? What what do you think? Where's the the line in the sand? What's what's your gut at this point? Uh, my gut, and again, I'm calling from literally probably less than twenty miles from the epicenter of time in Times Square, New York City. Um, I I think states like Texas who are already aggressively trying to open up, um, they, they, they're going to be fine. I think some states um, who've gotten hit uh, harder than, than most and where high school football really isn't uh, important and a, and, a, and a huge livelihood to some, uh, you know, those, those people may just do away with the season because it's not important to them right now. Um, you know, for instance, you know, tech, we, we all know what, what high school football is to the state of Texas. They're going to do whatever it takes to open up. Uh, back where we are, you know, if, if I talk to uh, the, the powers that be in, this, in the state of New York or the city of, of uh, Manhattan or the five boroughs, you know, high school football is the last thing on their mind. So, um, you know, in my opinion, we're more apt uh, to see those states affected versus the the power states where 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 it's 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 so more important every year the game is to the community uh, in these areas that haven't been hit as bad as the you know the LAs or the New Yorks or the Detroits of the world. 
Yeah, no, I think that's a pretty good take. Joe from Prep Grid Iron Logistics is on the line. They've been doing an awesome job over the last uh, three to four years of, of putting uh, games together, uh, big national uh, games, and some small ones, too. We talked about that the last time he was on. And for the people that didn't join us on the last podcast, why don't you give a little promo to uh, promote here to your uh, to your company and what you're doing, because we really, uh, we really appreciate you, because you're playing a critical role right now. Some teams probably couldn't schedule games if it wasn't for you. Yeah, uh, we started in 2015. We're going, uh, you know, the first game or two that we we unofficially put together was in 2015. Um, We found a need in our area where where we're from in northern New Jersey. Some of the the power privates in our area were having a real hard time uh, putting together a schedule. You know, for instance, Don Bosco, uh, uh, you know, back in the day, 2020, uh, 2009, 2011, yep. uh, when they were winning all those games and winning uh, mythical national championships, you know, nobody wanted to play them. The, uh, the publics in our state said thanks, but no thanks. And that led uh, uh, um, to a bunch of gaps and they were having a hard time filling them. So through, through uh, different uh, personal contacts I had from uh, being in the coaching community earlier in life, uh, back in the day, I was a graduate assistant under coach Bowden at Florida state. Uh, and I, and I, I, I worked uh, in, in Ohio for three years <clears throat> with a bunch of uh, high school football teams uh, while I was in a college role. I, I put together a couple of games for Don Bosco. I had uh, uh, Rommel come in from uh, New Orleans area to play them on um, Don Bosco's hundredth anniversary. I had, uh, I put together a home and home with Don Bosco and, and Moeller. Uh, one of my, uh, uh, friends from uh, where I went to college was a principal at Moeller at the time. So, you know, uh, in, impersonally or, or just through contacts, we were able to put those games together. And I said, you know what? Um, these privates in our area are probably not the only ones having these scheduling problems. Yeah, sure. That's for sure. So I, op- I opened up the, uh, put the website together, prep grid, iron logistics.com. And lo and behold, you know, f- almost five years later, uh, we have over 300 teams signed up from around uh, America, from uh, you know the state of Washington to the to, to Miami and everywhere in between. Publics and privates have signed up. So uh, at, on any given day, when I send out my scheduling alerts via email with the press of one button, I'm letting you know 300 plus teams know that you know Team ABC has an opening on uh, September 11th. Um, they want to host, and this is what they're paying. And and if you're interested, give us a holler. So so far, so good. And more importantly, uh, it's all free, which is uh, you know again, this guy is helping out our uh, high school football community out there. And he does have a last name. I made fun of you last time. I got to do it again. I don't I don't want people thinking you're Cher or Madonna. He has a last name. We just keep him Joe at Prep Gridiron Logistics, though. So well, you know what? I, hey, listen. Well, my my idol right now is Jake from State Farm. So I'm trying to follow his lead. <laughs> Yeah, nothing like borrowing something here or there. Well, let's let's get a little drum roll here from Paul Schaefer and uh, a la David Letterman. Uh, you've put together a top ten list, uh, the the best out of state schedules in the nation, and uh, you know we're going to start at ten. And I got to be honest with you, this one kind of shocked me because it's the defending mythical national champs. Take it away. Yeah, number ten, uh, I have St. John Bosco, who's going to be playing uh, to date so far. They're going to be hosting Miami Central. They're going to be playing uh, Miami Northwestern mm. and also East St. Louis from Illinois. And, and you know, the reason I have them, you, you'll see after we do the, the, the 10, um, that, that you know, it's, it's tough to rank these, these uh, schedules. In my opinion, you know, these are the toughest out-of-state, out-of-state schedules in America. But if you c- compare it to what they did last year, um, those three teams last year were – the math, the good counsel in Don Bosco. Um, so, you know, in my, in a perfect world, in my opinion, and we've spoken about this all the time, privates should be playing other privates. Right. Um, so, so, uh, you'll see in the other, the other, uh, uh teams coming up, um, you know, th- th- that's a good, that's a very good schedule. 
But you know, it, I want to know, harass you. Can I? I'm going to hop in here and harass you a yeah. little bit because I, yeah. I think I think it should be higher. I'm just going to say because you got mm-hmm. three really tough publics there that have trouble scheduling games, and then they got the Trinity League in there. But I, I'm going to leave that go for now. I, I know, just, but yeah, you, you, but you harass me this, with my rankings. I'm going to get you right. on this. <laughs> but you, but you got to remember, this has nothing. To, this is, in my opinion, remember we have a lot of time on our hands. This was me sitting around uh, sleeping with a pen and pad next to my bed every night. This is twenty. 20 top 10 <laughs> toughest out of state schedules has nothing to do with regular season. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, I, I stand corrected, but I might even still <laughs> want to argue with you a little bit on that. Okay, let's yep. let's go up to number nine. <laughs> All right, number nine is St. Thomas Aquinas, who's uh, uh, hosting McKetchern out of Georgia and then uh, playing Duncanville in Canton, Ohio. That one is going to be a dandy, no doubt about it. I mean, Duncanville's schedule is really picking up, and that's, of course, thanks to you. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about last time, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll save that question for a little bit because I'll probably be giving something away. Let's, let's go to number okay. eight, my home state of Pennsylvania. Number eight, St. Joe's Prep. The Hawks uh, are going to be at Shadow Creek, and they're going to be at St. John's College in uh, D.C. And, and they're, one of the, they're one of the schools that still have an opening or two, and they're just waiting for things to settle down. Uh, I was talking with them uh, about a, a, a game on 9-11 uh, that they may want to pursue. So for now, those are the, their two toughest out-of-state games. And again, they're both on the road. If you look at what we just spoke about, St. John Bosco has those three teams, but they're all they're all hosting them. Yeah, they're not they're not playing on the road, so you got to take that into consideration. You got Aquinas going to Canton to play Duncanville. It's not exactly you know going to Texas, but it's a it's a, a neutral field against a great team. Uh, but but St. Joe's Prep, any <laughs> anybody anywhere they'll play, and and those two games are both away. Yeah, they're they're not afraid of anyone. And Shadow Creek, by the way, folks, you, you got to know this program. It's been in existence varsity wise two years, in two state championships. They've won one. That was last year. They've only lost one game. What a, what a start up for them. And before we move on to seven, you you, you address that St. St. John's is looking to fill a couple of spots there. But I think. Have it going from the hardest schedule last year, and I think that's probably undisputed between you and I. It, it, it's going to be a tick back, right? It's not going to be as it, oh, rough it will. as it was. Yeah, it will. Yeah, St. St. John's up, you know, up until last year, in my opinion, had the the toughest high school football schedule in the history of the game, um, and and you know they're going to scale back. Uh, plus the the AD who set up that schedule is no longer with them. He went over to IMG. So you're going to see, because of his aggressiveness, you're going to see an uptick in IMG schedule because <laughs> he, he loves to He loves to test uh, his team out wherever he is. So uh, um, that's what's going on there. But uh, you, 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 we'll see. Uh, St. Joe's, again, could even add to that uh, and move up in the rankings. But right now, they're at, they're at number uh, eight with Shadow Creek and St. John's. All right, we're talking to Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics, his top 10 toughest out-of-state schedules. I want to make that a little more official because I hopped on him there at number 10. So let's go to number seven. All right, number seven is Good Counsel, who's, who, like St. Joe's, has two games right now scheduled both away. Uh, at St. Joe's Regional in New Jersey, opening weekend, end of August, and then at IMG, so uh, uh, just you know, Andy Stefanelli there, good counsel. He will go anywhere to play anyone. Uh, so he'll he'll be taking uh, his very talented team. They they bring back a lot, a, a lot. I think they I think it's all eleven starters on offense. Uh, uh, so uh, they're going to be a, a force to be reckoned with in the WCAC. Falcons are good, and now uh, just after I said the uh, Saint Saint John's may not have his toughest schedule, let's go to number six. <laughs> yes, yeah, Saint John's is at number six. Um, they're going to be hosting Saint Joe's Prep from Philly, and they're going to be visiting IMG. Now, now keep in mind with with this analysis, Saint John's College is playing other out of state teams. Right. You know, I, they're playing. They're hosting Milton out of Georgia, and they're also playing. Uh, USA Academy, the new new team, the new program out of Alabama. Um, I just listed what the teams that make this the make this schedule tough in uh, in the out of state realm. Yeah. So uh, 
So yeah, St. John's comes comes in at number six. They have a, uh, they're hosting and they they got an away game at IMG. Now I I, I like your thought process on the out of state. Uh, now we're uh, halfway there. Had uh, had this guy on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said I like tough schedules. Uh, who's at number five? Uh, number five, IMG out of Bradenton, Florida. Um, they these are their uh, the top five out of state teams they play are they're going to be hosting St. Francis uh, and again th- what's great about this game is it's not at the beginning of the year it's going to be mid to late uh, uh, mid to late November mm-hmm. so uh, uh, always great when when two solid teams play uh, late in the year because so many of these games happen earlier before conference play um, but to have IMG hosting St. Francis around Thanksgiving uh, can only help the game at that that point in time. Yeah, uh, we have them going to St. John's in D.C. They're going to be hosting Good Council. In uh, one of the most exciting games, most rewarding ones we put together this year, IMG is visiting uh, Baton Rouge to play Catholic. That'll be a dandy, uh, which which is going to be great. And also, they're going to be playing earlier in the season uh, at Dutch Fork at Dutch Fork. Or in the southeast. Yeah, it's actually going to be here in Atlanta. I was telling right. Coach Acosta, I'm looking forward to seeing that one because to- Coach Knotts, uh, you know, uh, they're going for five straight state championships. That'll be a dandy. I I, I like that one, and 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 like you said, I think they're go- you're going to see that schedule ramp up too. It's it, it's making right. sure they have enough people to play to fill out a ten game schedule. Right. We go to number yeah. four with Joe from uh, Prep Gridiron Logistics, and finally a public. Right, right. Good, good, good catch there so far. All the teams have been privates. Number four, uh, Duncanville comes in at number four out of Texas. Um, as we talked about earlier, they're playing St. Thomas Aquinas at the Nike event in Canton, Ohio, early in the season. And then uh, on the nine uh, eleven or nine twelve, actually Saturday nine twelve. They're going to be hosting St. Francis Academy, which is, is one of the top games of the season by far. Yeah, no doubt about that. And I was going to ask you this question earlier when we were talking Duncanville, but, you know, um, we've, and we've talked about Texas before, not going outside of its borders and all that. Duncanville is doing that. You helped set up the, the St. John's game last year. Why, why, is, why is Duncanville a little bit different mentality-wise when it, when it comes to playing the best and going outside of Texas? Uh, I just think it's the leadership there. Coach has um, done this before. You know, when he was at Carter, he used to uh, um, travel all over America and play who'd ever, who'd ever play him. So he's just taking that attitude at Duncanville. Uh, again, as as they do well, as them and North Shore do well down there, you know, it's it's going to be harder and harder to find uh, good regional competition who want to play them. Um, next thing you know, we come in and we start bringing the big boys down there, which is what was needed, in my opinion. Uh, and, and it's only going to help and grow the game. As we talked about last time, when St. John's went down there to Duncanville, Duncanville was averaging about 5,000 fans a game. Um, that game, uh, all, you know, although uh, St. John's didn't bring a lot of people because, you know, logistically it was tough, mm-hmm. we had, we, they doubled the attendance that night, and there were lines to get into the game well into the start of the third quarter. Uh, so it shows that down in Texas – uh, you know, you don't have to bring a team that's who could bring a couple hundred fans themselves. If you bring a, a huge out of state name from whether it's California, New Jersey, DC, um, the fans love the game so much. They're going to come on board and, and, and go to see the game. Yeah. And I just to see what the other team ha- has to offer and how good they really are. So, uh, uh, that you know that that proved my point that the uh, uh, Texas fans we know they love the game but they they love it even more when there's a a curious out of state team in town that they want to see yeah no i I agree completely with you on that one uh, Joe from prep gridiron logistics on the line here doing the top ten out of state schedules we've got three more to go and here's a team that was forced <laughs> to play a national schedule a couple of years ago. Yeah, one of our top clients, St. Francis Academy, comes in at number three. Um, the, uh, this year, they, we were able to put together an 11-game schedule for them, which is outstanding. Uh, you know, they've been through a lot with their, their conference, but basically boycotting them going forward. So we were able to put together an 11-game schedule. Um, they come in at number three because these they, they play the following three teams all on the road, Okay. 
Um, they're going to be in California at Centennial, Corona Centennial. Um, we talked about they're going to be going to Duncanville on 912. And in, in uh, late November, they're going to be playing at IMG. Again, they, that's only three games. They have eight other teams they're playing, but, but those, those three teams, in my opinion, give them uh, – uh, a top three ranking in the toughest out of state schedules for 2020. Yeah, I also saw uh, Coach uh, Poggi put a uh, put a little tweet out there the other day. Got a little little uh, little stirred, <laughs> we'll say. Got some people stirred up about it. And got yeah, hey, it. you know what? If, uh, we uh, you know we, we talk often, and he knows you know as long as they're talking about you, things are good. You know whether <laughs> it's good or bad, he knows how to how, he knows about uh, publicity in general and, and PR. Oh, and he also knows knows how to help kids. I mean, that's the one thing that yep. he's doing there that that I think a lot of times gets overlooked with everything else. But uh, I, I think as we hit uh, one and two here, there's probably going to be some people out there maybe putting their finger in there and trying to clear it, making sure that they, they heard this right. So uh, mm-hmm. Because I don't think they're household names. I'm, I'm just going to be honest about it. So let's go to number yeah. two. Yeah, and, and they're not household names, but they're putting together a schedule like this to become a household name. So number two, uh, the second toughest out-of-state schedule for 2020 uh, if Life Christian Academy out of Richmond, Virginia, uh, Coach Scott there is putting together, uh, has put together a schedule that that is you know second to only one. <laughs> quite honestly, <laughs> um, the teams he's going to be playing are all road games. Okay, he's playing all of these teams on the road at St. John's College, at Damatha, at IMG, at Cincinnati Elder. And at St. Francis. Whew. Now, we're, again, these, we're not saying these teams are going to win all these games. We're just promoting the fact that they put together the toughest schedules in America. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we saw this a while back, back in the day with, with Coach Sills at ECA. You know, he put together a bunch of good schedules. You know, didn't do that well, but, that, you know, he, he was hailed as a as an aggressive scheduler. And, and from this from our perspective, uh from prep crew on logistics, you know, that's what, that's what we're acknowledging today. All right. Well, uh, Paul Schaefer hit the drum roll, please. Brrr, there we All go. Right. Uh, hey, take it away. And the number one toughest out of state schedule in 2020 goes to the new USA Academy down in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, who has put together a 10 game schedule. Uh, seven of the teams uh, ended up in America's top 250 last year. Um, uh, whatever poll you use, those teams are in it. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to be playing at Good Council, at St. John's, at St. Francis, at St. Peter's, and hosting Trinity Christian out of Cedar Hill, Clearwater International Academy out of Florida, and IMG. Whoo. And, and we had Coach uh, on a couple of weeks ago, and I said, have you lost your mind? <laughs> but he said, yeah, no, I mean, let's go for it. <laughs> no, listen, listen, if, if you see the schedule they're playing, even if they go uh, four and six, you know, if they go five and five, you know, that's, that's a tremendously successful season, in my opinion, against that schedule. But even if they get three, four wins against that schedule, it's a start, and you have something to, to a foundation – for 2021 after that. Um, so, so that's what it's all about. They're looking to attract players and the best way to attract players is by being able to either have a virtual call with them or, or visit the student and saying, look at our schedule in 2020, find a team in America that, that plays a tougher schedule, uh, from week one to week 12. Uh, it's, you know, it's, that's going to be hard. I mean, again, they have no conference. Um, and so in my opinion, this, this, schedule usa schedule uh trumps st john's college from last year remember st john's out of state schedule was six games and they got they went from uh you know least difficult to most difficult those six games last year if you look at them yeah. that was done intentionally <laughs> these guys are like you know give, think about it good counsel st john's st francis st peter's img trinity christian clear water academy you know, clear. You know, don't sleep on Clearwater Academy. It's a small school, but they're 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 getting kids from all over the country. They just just had three transfers come in from Canada. Um, they they should have beaten Elder last year. I was at the game. 
uh, they're an up and coming program that's doing really, really well and, 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 uh, get, becoming attractive to many, many students, uh, inside of America and, and also, uh, you know, from, from other, you know, from the North and, uh, from Germany. I mean, uh, there's a lot of international students there and football players who could ball. Uh, and I, it, it's it is an impressive uh, list you just put together with great games across the country, Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics. I got a couple quick questions for you before we go away. Some may say, um, "Where is that uh, that two time defending national champ who finished uh, close to the top last year?" Modern day. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm saying that myself. Uh, we we do work with them, and we we we're the ones that brought St. Francis in last year. Uh, there has been a change. You know, the AD left, Tia Meza, a great, great person, worked with her for several years. She's no longer there. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, when the schedule comes out, um, it's not going to be as it has been the last few years. Um, you know, well, it, 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 is, it, is, it is posted on Max Prep, so we can, yeah. we can just say it. I mean, you've, you've got the, the Corona Centennial game, which is, is, is a yep. good one, and they've met a couple of years in a row. Um, right. You've got the, the team from, what do we have, a team from Salt Lake, I think? Yeah, well, uh, West. West, yeah, yeah you've got West. West. Yep. And then Muir's in there. Is that a typo? <laughs> no. I, I don't know. I, you know what? You know, I, I'm, it, it, I'm just saying, there's, there's a team in there. Uh, that I, that kind of shocked me. I know in the past, uh, La Mirada's played, um, you know, because they would always, you know, look for those top level games. I was a little shocked at that game that came up. Yeah, and, and again, I, again, we tried. I mean, we, uh, you know, we put together the Trinity League versus uh, uh, USA last year and brought St. Francis and Good Counsel and Milton uh, uh, to, to to Cali to play those top teams. Um, again, it it's it gets harder yeah. as you as you win these games. Um, you know, more, more and more people don't want to play. Even even the elite power privates have reservations. So as, as Matter, Matter Day and St. John Bosco continue to dominate, it's you know they're going to need us even more, which which is great for us. But uh, you know, we do this to make to create great games and and the memorable games that that people will never forget, and that would probably never happen if we didn't uh, start our service. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed too. I'm hoping they they. Uh, uh, you know, in 2021, they, they, they go back to doing what they were doing. You know, I, I have, I have a, 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 a roster of power privates that would love to go to Cali and play Matter Day in St. John Bosco every year. Um, let's, let's hope that, uh, you know, uh, they start playing uh, these teams, you know, the, the St. Francis's of the world and the others uh, uh, sooner than later, because those are, those are awesome games. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Uh, Joe from Prep Gridiron Logistics, we're going to wrap it up with with this one. And and again, you do have all your clients, so I'm, I'm going to use that as the preface and keep you protected legally. I know you're not going to pick one over the other, even, even though you just put together a top 10. But my question is, since you do go to, to several of these games, is there one game, uh, numero uno, that you just can't wait to go and see in person out of the ones you just talked about? Um. Yeah, I, I would say uh, IMG St. Francis because th- those two are the most uh, closely scrutinized programs in the world of high school football. Um, they should they they should be playing every year. Um, they know it. They know that they need each other, which is great. Um, I just wish the others would would also feel the same. I mean, in my opinion, I put together a, a proposal before Tia left a matter day. I put together a proposal where they played uh, uh, they played uh, Matter Day and St. John Bosco played St. Francis every season. Uh, five, it was a five year program where wow. the teams alternate alternated, and it wasn't they didn't accept it. But but these teams these power privates need to start thinking as one. Okay, St. John Bosco, Matter Day, um, St. Francis, IMG, Good Counsel, St. John, St. Joe's Prep, Aquinas. They should all every year be speaking to each other to alleviate their scheduling woes. Um, I'm trying to establish that through through my means, but uh, we haven't quite perfected it yet. But, you know, going forward, all these teams should – if if they if they work together and become a, a, a you know an unofficial alliance and start scheduling each other, th- their scheduling problems will disappear. So yep. that that's the point I'm trying to get apart uh, uh, across to them. Uh, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm uh, I, I will get there. I could promise you that. 
Well, the the alliance is part of the first step that's being developed, and and I always like to brag, and uh, I'm just going to say it was my idea first. I put it into Kevin uh, (laughs) Wright's head, and it's on tape, so you can go back and listen to it. When it was the High School Football America radio show, the first time I had Kevin on, I just said, Kevin, the only way that you guys are going to survive is if you put every one of the privates together that nobody wants to play, and then you divide the country into four or five regions, and then you play a national championship. Right. And, 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 then, and, we, and, and, then, and then Kevin went back to somebody and ran with it. <laughs> yeah, and, and we are, and, and for that, that alliance does exist as of today. There's uh, 15 teams from 11 states, and, and we are the scheduling, you know, the scheduling yep. service that they use. But I can tell you, we were right in the middle of it. There are 15 teams. None of the 14 others wanted to play IMG. <laughs> so what kind of alliance is that if, if 95% of the alliance won't play the best team in the alliance? So uh, um, it is what it is. I mean, that's a start. <laughs> that's a start. But, what, what you know, I, I'd rather have the, that alliance. Again, it's unofficial. Nothing. Right. It's nothing, uh, you know, that it, it affects conference games or state associations or anything like that. But um, if I can get St. John Bosco Matter Day, uh, and Aquinas to join that alliance, then we then we'll have something. Yeah, and that's that's really the key to it all, which is to have you know. Well, now Florida obviously has the ability to go to Geico and that. It's it's really what California is going to do that's going to make yep. the the big difference. And uh, we we could spend another twenty minutes talking about the the. We'll just leave it at that. I won't even pick on the CIF. I'll just say <laughs> I'm just going to well, say it's it's you, whatever rock that's being pushed is a heavy rock and a tall mountain. Right. So we'll leave it and at I, that. And I, yeah, and I could. I can tell you because we meet. I meet with the Paragon people two, three times a year in Chicago to to set up our schedules and just to keep each other posted on what we're doing. And uh, you know that that process has been started with Cali. And man, if if, if and when it happens, uh, the Geico uh, series gets way more important than it is now and more valid. Yeah, no doubt about that. Well, Joe, you know, first off, you know, stay safe, stay healthy to to you and your family, and that that's the the main thing. But we appreciate what you do for for high school football. Uh, again, uh, for people just tuning in, if you didn't hear it at the top, you, you hear him throwing around all these big names, but his company, Prep Gridiron Logistics, is all doing it for free. There ain't one penny being taken, and I uh, salute you for that, Joe. You are doing it for the good of the game. So stay safe, my friend, and we uh, we will talk uh, definitely down the line. I know there's going to be a 2020 high school football season, no doubt my mind great and i salute you too thanks for everything that you're doing for the high school football coaches and also uh the high school football uh, sports writers the high school football america podcast has been brought to you by GameStrat, america's premier sideline instant replay system with outstanding reliability and customer service with different plans priced right for every coach's budget to get a demo go to gamestrat.com or click on the GameStrat banner ad located on every page of highschoolfootballamerica.com That's today's High School Football America podcast. I'm Jeff Fisher.